Hi, everybody. Oh, the light is weird. I don't know. Is that going to... Ha! Ah, we did it. Although it looked like I was glowing, so I should have left it. That was cool. Um, hi, everybody. Rochelle Jones Luncheon Live at 1145. I am back. Hi, Patty. Thanks for joining. Um... I'm back in my car. School's back in session, and I meet you guys around the lunchtime hour just before I pick up my youngin who gets out at noon on Fridays. So we're back in the car, and that also means, lucky for you, we'll actually be on time because I've got to get out of the car and pick her up at a different time. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about self-care. Hi, Cheryl. Thanks for joining. Uh... A little bit about self-care, right? There's this, it's like this buzzword of self-care, 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 which is great, which is awesome, but I think it, it gets kind of mixed up and messy, and um, hi there, thanks for joining. It gets mixed up and messy, this whole self-care topic, and so I wanted to just bring you some tools uh, that you can start using now that I found really effective, that this is how I live my life. You can choose it or not. But sometimes we just need to know a place to start, right? So here we go. Self-care. What does that mean? How am I supposed to do it? What does that look like? Um, the, the buzz around, I don't know, society, the internet. Hi, thanks for joining. Uh, the buzz. And we're back at all the interruptions and all the mistakes that Rochelle makes. I forgot to turn off an alarm, so it pauses the video. Yay, Rochelle's so human. Okay, so this whole self-care thing, a lot of people say, do what makes you happy. Do you, girl, you do. You do you, man, do what makes you happy. And the thing is, what makes one person happy isn't necessarily going to make another person happy. I think a lot of times... Um, People think that whole do you means like, I'm going to, I'm going to do my, hi, Bolty, hi, brother, you know, um, I'm going to do my pedicures and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do all the things that, that I want to do. And, um, yes and no. Self-care is yes and no. Sure. Do your pedicures, your manicures, get your hair done, get all of those things. Those are, those are fun and those are important if that's what you need. But what I mean about self-care is uh, healing yourself, coming from a place of wellness. Hi, Jones. Um, coming from a place of wellness that does not depend on external sources. So if I am looking to self-care to fill me up in some way because I've got my nails done perfectly, which I never do, uh, my nails done perfectly, or my clothes are done a certain way, or my hair is done a certain way, I am never going to truly feel whole and full. And um, gosh, if I run out of money or if I fall ill, what am I going to do if I'm depending on some external something or other to create happiness? That includes exercise, by the way. That includes exercise. That includes eating well. If I'm looking to that to make me healthy or happy. Now, um, the reason I say no, do you, is not quite what I'm talking about for self-care, is... Um, also, by the way, another way we can look to self-care is if I just, if I'm, you know, serve everyone, if I do everything, you know, and, and do this and do this and do this, we can be in communities that say you need to serve, get your eyes off yourself and serve another person. I agree with that too, to a degree. But if I'm approval addicted, which by the way, guys, we're all addicted to approval. We want to feel good. We want to be approved of by our fellows. Again, if we are using that to numb out to what's actually going on with us and, and helping us to feel whole or better, it's still depending on an external source, right? And then what happens, especially if we're really, really approval addicted, like I have been in most of my life, um, I'm run down. I go through periods where I'm run down. I'm bitter. I'm resentful at really the situation that I've created for myself because of my addiction, right? So when I'm talking about self-care and really healing you and going after you, somebody's walking up by the way. And so they're going to think I'm crazy walking, talking to my phone all by myself. <laughs> I love looking crazy in public, but I press on because I'm not approval addicted. So here we go. Okay, so when I'm talking about self-care, what I mean is do what needs to be done to create a healthy and um, complete you. Now, that is going to begin, you really can't get away from it, uh, digging in 
to you and healing your wounds at a root level, healing your emotional wounds at a root level, because you really can't figure out why you think happiness needs to come from outside of you until you dig in and look at your wounds, examine them, sit with them and heal them at a deep down root level. Guys, I'm going to take you back as young as we can get in your memory so you can become truly healthy and well. It's sort of like if I have a a diabetic sore and I just treat the sore, but I don't do anything about the diabetes, what's causing that, where that's coming from, it doesn't make sense, right? And, And same with your emotional heart, same with your emotional wellness. So dealing in, digging into the wounds of your soul at a root level. Get still on the inside. Get your energy still on the inside. Not that I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. And if they say, and if they do, and if that happens, that's not from a place of stillness. That's from a place of noise. That is not stillness. That is not healthy. And that is not wellness. Okay. So some basic practicals of getting ourselves healthy and well. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is get a paper calendar. Print one out. There are several. Type up Google free printable calendar. You can do that. Um, I have a certain one that I like. It's not fancy. It's not a name brand. It's the Office Depot brand. Staples doesn't have it. Only Office Depot does. And I, um, I particularly like this one. Don't copy me. Go get the one that serves your needs best. Hi there. Thanks for joining. So this one has a little folder in the front that I can keep a few little things. As you can see, I just have a brand new one I'm getting ready for next year because it's August and I feel like oh, I've got to be prepared. So um, it's just very simple. I can keep my work, you know, an hourly thing for the week. Um, there's some weekend space. Um, I like the monthly tabs. That's helpful for a quick at a glance. We're gone at this time. You know, it helps me put the big things. Um, It's just super simple. Okay, so this is brand new. This is how it starts. A paper calendar. So fancy and high tech. Um, I keep a pencil and this is my current one that I'm using. And um, so I keep a pencil in there because again, I'm so fancy. Uh, I just will erase things or change things or life changes or whatever, right? I've got stickers. Uh, in there, a few things in my pockets and whatever. Okay. And then I have, look at, look, I put, I put tabs on my, on my week calendars. Okay. But here's the thing. Here's something that I woke up to. And basically what I wake up to in my life is out of desperation. Uh, It comes because something's not going well. Something's not, it, it just doesn't feel right. And I'm busy in my mind. Yes. Life is busy time wise, Some of that we can control, some of that we cannot, but when I'm busy in my mind, everything is worse. You know, after grief happens, after some loss event happens, not just death, by the way, a move, a change. How many people just sent their kids off to school, to college, maybe kindergarten? It hurts. Those are huge changes. What do I do again? How do I get into this again? But my kid, all these change, they hurt. They produce feelings. Those feelings are called grief. If there's something you wish could be a little different or a little better, have a little bit more time or a little bit more something, did I prepare them enough? The noise. And that is grief. So born out of my, my thing. So you see, I have, what is this? Last week? Last week, pretty empty because I was still um, away from work. So you see, I have um, the pinks uh, are my actual work hours. Black says, Rochelle, don't you dare put something in there because what happens in the moment, someone will say, can you please? And I'll be like, yeah, of course, because I forget all the details, all the details of all the things I need to consider for myself, for my individual children, for my husband, for the commitments I have. They sort of fly out the window in the moment. So I put markers, my actual work hours, Rochelle, stop working outside of that because you have commitments. Black says, no, you're not allowed to put anything here. It's permanent. Um, Orange is a reminder. I do attend a church. I'm very uh, devoted to my spiritual beliefs. And um, and I do attend a church. I am part of a church community. Um, because of the people, the, the, the community of believers who have similar belief systems to what I do. So um, that's what the orange means. You see my long pinks there. What do I have over here? I have blue. That's a, a every Friday event for my son. Orange means it's standard girl. Don't mess with that for a church reason, a friend. That's like a personal reason. 
Yellow is like work stuff. Look at my lunch and lives are in there. Um, Sunday services. What does that say? Sunday. Rochelle, stop giving away Sunday evenings. You need to prepare for the week. You need to be with your family. You need to do this stuff, okay? So you go through. Now we've got weekday um, stuff now that the kids are in school because this is a week that reflects their school time. So they have different hours all the dang time. My daughter's pretty much the same, but she has a Friday half day. So she's like the teal line. The green line signifies my son's hours because he's at a new school this year. I can't wrap my brain around which day is what and where with who and blah, blah, blah. So I've got all of their little, okay, Peyton's this day today. Danny's this day today. Hi, thanks for joining. Do you see what I'm saying? I have things like bills. The day, one day a month that I'm going to take care of all the bills for the month coming. So I just have so much stuff in here. That's my paper calendar. Um, really important. Start with a paper calendar. After you put the necessities in there, school schedules aren't going to change. Um, maybe you have a solid work schedule. That's also not going to change. You know, the things that are unchanging, like I said, the church, the bill stuff, the whatever, those are not going to change. I'm not going to mess with those. I don't even have any say in what the school hours are. Get those solidly in your paper calendar. And then after your paper calendar, go through and write down the, ne the other necessities. Um, I lied. I lied. We talked about necessities already. Then go through and write, what time are you going to sleep each night? You should have an appropriate amount of sleep. And let me just tell you, I have only done this for three days myself because I'm the worst because I like to pretend that I am something better than human and don't sleep enough hours in the day. It's only killing me and hurting me and creating a less well me to serve you. <sighs> go figure. Mind blown. Put your sleep schedule. What time are you going to sleep each day? Write it in there. It's on moving. Write in there each day what time you're waking up. Write it in there. It's on moving. Um, find the days you can exercise. Do two or three, even if it's a walk, even if it's just a push up, even if it's a set, even if it's just stretching. Do something that is going to create a whole and healthy you. Um, create in there what time are you going to meditate? I like to start my day with what I call prayer, similar to meditation, a time to get myself centered. At that time, I'm in the in my Bible. At that time, I'm also in whatever you know book I'm working on. I'm still currently working on the Mass and Kit book. I got it like three days behind, so I'm. I'm working on my mass and kit book. I should be complete today, but I am only on day 36. So, you know, that's my time to deal with me. If I have grief work, I will often do it in the morning, but let's be honest. I have one that's pending that I should have done yesterday, but I was like, no, I've got to set up my calendar. I can't even focus. So I did my calendar so I can get to my grief work, right? So things that are just about you, your wholeness, your wellness. Then number four, Put, um, if you have a changeable work schedule, decide what your work hours are going to be after you've figured out when you're going to sleep, when you're going to eat, when you're going to drink, when you're going water, not alcohol, when you're going to drink water. Um, so work schedule, that's when I choose my work schedule, work around that, right? And then I can put in, um, others, if I have a visit with this person that I'd really be like to do, well, now I can see where my holes and my openings are, right? And so again, I'm creating, <laughs> yeah, alcohol, right? So then I'm creating a space for that. Another helpful thing is a small notebook. A small notebook that I keep things written in, that's this. Ever, it go, this and this go with me like a safety blanket, like a bottle, like a pacifier. They're with me for everything, for everything. Very rarely will I forget both, and they're not helpful. Have a, um, a notepad. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Have a notepad where you're constantly writing any thought that comes into your mind, which would be my notebook, any thought that comes into my mind. I write it, write it, write it, write it, write it. And then it's out of my brain. Again, I can get still and then I create lists for the day. I've got a work side and a home side. And then I can sort of prioritize what I'm going to do today. What needs to, has to be done first. I work that way. And then I will make a new one tomorrow 
with the I even if I've already done something I am nuts that way I will write it down just so I could cross it off whether it's work whether it's home it doesn't matter so this I have a paper of some kind every day that's floating around with me another way to get yourself still on the inside what am I gonna eat stop even thinking about it this is something I use in our busy life called emails I want to say it's you can get group you like coupon codes online but emails is so helpful I want to say it's like $75 a year maybe and every single week it's not hooked up to the internet right now but every single week I get a um, a meal plan you could choose I currently have selected keto because we're just trying to do less carbs in our home uh, my body doesn't feel good and my son and so we just aren't doing that but you can choose simple you can choose crock pot you can choose whatever go to emails you um, get a whole dinner menu for an entire week emailed to you or you can use the app really simple um, add the ingredients that you need it'll create a shopping list for you by you know section produce meat dairy whatever um, then I don't even have to think and it's super easy go try it I believe there's a free trial I should probably look that up for you guys it's just so darn helpful so use emails very very helpful uh, ways to get yourself organized and settled, but please don't neglect. You can be organized to death. You're still going to have to go in and, and clean out those old emotional wounds. That's just how it, how it is folks. So, um, there's no substitute for truly healing yourself on the inside. Just one of those, but these are little ways that I use to help myself find stillness so that when I'm with my family, with my kids, you know, in the evening time, I am still, I'm actually there. Or if on a budget, you can look up a diet plan. That's absolutely true. And emails, by the way, does have a lot of them. They have diet, they have, uh, they have low carb, they have keto, they have um, just light, they have smaller portions. They ha I've used most of them over the years. We've been using these this emails for many years. But yeah, look up a diet plan, have, have things sent to you. Whatever you can do to not have to be on all the time. What can you delegate? What can you ask for help with? Um, I did all the calendaring from like 9 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. yesterday. And then I was like, what am I doing? This particular one, I could be asking my husband for help for. But I already did it for this year, so he'll have to do it next school year. But food for thought. Again, I'm waking up all the time to myself, the needs of myself, and um, and also how to help my family. How can they even appreciate what I do if I'm not asking them for their help? How can they know what to do on their own if I die or when they just move and grow and go away if I haven't involved them at every step of the way? So here's the thing. Yes, absolutely thank you um, ask your hold yourself accountable or have an accountability partner I will be that I will be your life coach by the way if I'm your life coach you are going to go through grief recovery first so if that's not something you're interested in don't even call I'm gonna put you through grief recovery first because I want I want you to learn how to hear stillness and feel stillness from the inside after that We'll move through your life. I'll help you. I'll get you set up. This is how I live. Uh, I'm a working mom. I'm a stay-at-home mom who's largely responsible for the home stuff. I do have to ask for help from my family, but I do own a business. I run a business, and all aspects of that are really me. Um, it's just me in the business, so I work hard around here, and um, calendaring is big. So, yes, have your digital copies of your calendar, but write your stuff down. You can see it better. It creates a different type of stillness. And guess what does not happen when you look at your paper? Notifications, texts, emails, phone calls. None of that happens. Get yourself some paper. Be still. Create your own. But start finding stillness, guys. You can live this life as busy and as full. But let me tell you, it's not cool. And it's not inspiring anyone else to want to be like you. That's what we're supposed to be doing. So go get started. Dig out those root causes. Let's get healthy. Call me. I'd love to teach you. And um, get paper. Let's get started. All right. I love you all. Thanks for joining Lunch and Live 1145. I will see you next week. Bye, everybody.